Here we go. Good evening, everyone. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this very important live stream where we're going to explain to you uh, something that's actually being used uh, quite openly at the moment. I actually heard this earlier on the radio. I was quite surprised. <clears throat> uh, people are starting to speak of a mafia state. Oh, interesting. But I would like to speak of a mafia government and uh, political parties that behave like gangs, uh, those that are in parliament, uh, most of them. And then uh, these parties ganging together and becoming like a mafia uh, as a government, as a parliament. And it's actually quite shocking to see this unfolding. And we will be giving you the details with regards to how this unfolded, the timelines, etc., Mm -hmm. So I'm not here as a political commentator. I will leave that to Lauren. Um, what is important that you know what is happening to your freedom uh, to be able to vote for the people you want in the elections. And this goes for many parties. And uh, to me, there is no such thing as a small party. There are new parties with new ideas that are being kept out of the system completely. And we will be talking about that. Oh, definitely. In There's so many misconceptions people have around that. So I'd love to finally talk about it in depth. We know of two occasions now. So let me speak about what's out in the news. Even when journalists are shocked, you should understand that people are starting to see <clears throat> that our system is set up in a certain way to empower those that are already there in Parliament, that were there since 1994. Jennifer, and, um, I'm on my phone. I just want you to say, yeah. I need to send some links to me to share now. now. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Lauren's just uh, sharing a few things. We're going to be sharing quite a bit with you. But there's two times uh, now in this year and in last year where the parties in Parliament were given massive amounts of money. I'm talking about hundreds of millions of rand the first time round, and now another 200 million rand for the elections, those that are already in Parliament. Now, I'm not sure how that equates to a free and fair election setup. I'm not sure how elections can be free and fair if the parties in Parliament are just taking more and more taxpayers' money, throwing it at themselves. Obviously, the ANC needs money, but do you see the DA complaining? Do you see the EFF complaining? At least Julius Malema was open and honest enough to say, to say that they got a 30 million rand windfall in last year. He was open to tell the public that we got over 30 million of your taxpayers' money and we didn't expect it. We just got it out of the blue. So they could have large celebrations, fill up stadiums, get buses to drive people to these events, etc. So you need to think about how the system is set up and why Gangs, party gangs are now ganging together and becoming a literal mafia against new parties that want to come in and change the system or change the status quo. And it's actually quite frightening how bad things have, have gone in a very short space of time. Very, very short. OM is, we registered December 8, 2018. So that's like five years ago. Yes, no, eight, five years ago. And um, so we were on track. We were doing our thing. We were growing nicely. And we just expected to contest the elections like normal human beings. Raise the money within three months. Mm -hmm. Quick, you know, quick. All that stuff that's like considered normal. And then within the, within the space of, a, I don't know, I suppose less than a year, things drastically changed. It's much less than a year because this new act that uh, came into being uh, belated. <clears throat> Uh, I said it was never going to come around within two years. Uh, they asked for extensions at the Concord to allow independent candidates to contest the elections. What has happened is they've changed the entire parliamentary system. And I don't think most people understand this. I'll explain it to you now because that's just uh, how the parliament is set up at the moment. So the parliamentary 400 seats is actually split in two. So you either contest as a party for 200 seats or you contest as a party and or an independent for the other 200 seats. What this means is immediately, um, because you will have, a, will have a ballot for the national vote for parties, a ballot for the regional vote, which is the nine provinces for independents and or parties, and then a provincial vote, three ballots. This changes everything. And what happens is, 
because nationally you're now contesting for only 200 seats. It doubles the amount of votes you need, um, in theory, to actually get a seat. So we, before the last party, Al Jamar, got a seat with 31,000 votes, you're now going to need around 70,000 votes to get a seat. The whole playing field has been changed. And the independents, they made sure they will have no power whatsoever. You will not be able to run as an independent and become the president. So anyone thinking that that was possible, it's not the case. You can only contest and you can actually explain this um, in a region and you need to get all your votes in that region. Oh, there's the act. That's yeah, funny. Lauren's got you the whole act. I did clean up your <laughs> Thank mess. Thank you. I want to firstly, I want to share um, three parties, digital signature acquisition forms, including OMS. Please sign everyone. If you believe in democracy, you should sign every party's form. So yes, OMS. And then um, any other party that wants to share theirs can just send it to us and we'll put it out there. But I think you can explain the timeline so people understand what happened since June last year when this new act came in yeah because that's when it was gazetted the Firstly, 19th of june you know what's oh, it's so clever the the first problem the number one problem in the government knows this most people are politically ignorant like mm. everyone doesn't including matter including parties <clears throat> including parties yeah. most people don't know how most voters don't know how the system works so when you tell them how the system changed. They didn't know how it worked in, in, to begin with, so they can't compare us. They can't compare you can see the it from the, the You past. can see it from the comments that people make. 100%. Uh, so the comments that people make are absolutely, I don't know, shocking, um, especially people that call themselves educated or professionals, yet politically they are really lacking. I was there. Yeah, so was I. I was, I was, I was one of those people, I have to admit. I don't know the difference between a local government election and a national election. And it's clear that most people still don't, still don't know the yeah. difference. So in the past, in local government elections, and this is super important to understand, you had to go and vote in your voting district, in your ward, okay? And you had a specific VD where you should vote. And typically, you would have five, maybe maximum seven VDs uh, in smaller areas, three VDs, maybe two voting districts where you will be registered to vote. And you can't vote in the one next door. No, you have to vote in that one. Mm -hmm. This was in the local government elections. In the national elections, which are three years later, because the local government elections follow two years on the national elections. So the, the national elections are always three years after the local government elections. You could vote anywhere in the country in the past. Anywhere. If you were on holiday in a different province, you can go to any voting station and you could vote. But this year, for the first time, in 2019, you could still do this. For the first time, they are saying because of the cost of ballots and not knowing how many ballots to carry extra because of this, they've scrapped this. They literally said because of the holiday time. It's not holidays. It's not holidays. It's not happening during the holidays. I mean, uh, what's it? The, Easter, it is a public later. holiday. It is a public holiday. Uh, declared a public holiday, mm. but I mean, people that are working out of their province will not be able to vote in the national elections. You're not going, you're going to rock up at a voting station and they're going to turn you away. For the first time, <coughs> you have to vote in your local VD, like with local government elections. And they know that they are going to have many people not actually go and register for the national elections in the local VD. And if you have not gone and changed your details, if you moved, you will be turned away during these elections. So this is an unfair thing. So free and fair elections, when it comes to fair, this is unfair. Mm. Firstly, you voting, this has nothing to do with parties contesting or independence. No. Okay, so where do we start? The system, how it worked before is according to the constitution any part any person can stand for public office and anyone can start a political party provided that they are eligible to vote to be eligible to vote you must be 18 years or older and then not have a criminal record of some kind and then the other thing is be a south african citizen obviously and if you can do that you can enter the political system via starting a political party 
And then what do you need to start a political party? You need 500 rand. And then it was 500 signatures that changed it to 1,000. You get that once, you're registered. You can contest any elections and all you have to do is pay the contesting fee. A contesting fee is different to a registration fee. The registration fee, as I said, was 500 rand. So contesting uh, was 250,000 rand nationally and then it was 45,000 rand per province. And then in the, in the municipal elections, Contesting whether you're an independent or whether you're a party, it's a thousand rand per ward. So it's pretty simple. It's also three thousand five hundred rand per metro, and I think it's two thousand rand per district, thousand rand per per ward. So, so those are plain things. You needed to be able to gather that amount of money to actually. So there contest. are barriers in place. Mm -hmm. You need the funds, and you need and the signatures. Initial, the initial signature. Yeah. So if you're an independent and local, I think it's two hundred signatures. And if you're a party for local, I'm not sure what it is, but for national, it's five, oh, it was 500, it's now 1,000. And so there's, there is something you have to do. It's not just free and open to everyone. You have to do something. That's fine. But now what happened? And just listen to this timeline and ask yourself, does this make any sense whatsoever? What happened was that um, New Nation Movement, which is like a conglomerate of parties who believe in aligning the Constitution with the Electoral Act, they decided that they're going to take the government to court and de demand that the Electoral Act is brought more in line with the Constitution so that independent candidates can run for public office. In That's Parliament, yeah, all nationally. They asked. Yeah. That's all they yeah. asked. And then the Concord decided... No, no, it wasn't the Concord, sorry. It was, my... it was a Concord. Mm. Oh, no, no, it was a Cape Town High Court. No, I'm talking about NCOP and National Assembly. Yes. Decided out of the blue, while we're in here, while we are changing the Electoral Act, let's make it very difficult. No, let's make it impossible for unrepresented parties to get into government. That actually happened in NCOP because, yeah. because in Parliament, when they actually came up with this new legislation for voting, they thought the parties already had to get votes to register. So that is done and dusted. Yeah. But the independent candidates, they need to make a provision for that. So they, they, they said that for an independent to prove that they have support, they need to get 15% of the highest vote in the region where they are going to take part in the last elections. That's basically what happened. And it left Parliament like that, okay? Parties untouched. It went to INCOP and in INCOP, someone got the bright idea and said, but these parties that aren't represented in parliament, we believe they should be subjected to exactly the same thing. And it will be interesting to see how that actually materialized because these parties are already legitimate. They already had to get the signatures. They already had to pay the money. And you were already contest contesting by-elections, etc. And uh, the local government elections, many parties were already doing this. Now, out of the blue, Here's a requirement for parties that are already registered, that already got the signatures, already paid the money, to have this additional 15%, which now includes the national highest, mm -hmm. which is uh, comes, I think it's from Gauteng, where you would need 13,890 signatures. Yeah, but then what happened is that the, so all of that happened, and then... The Concord, then, then there was an appeal. There was an appeal, a case about case, this. Yeah. Okay, a case about the, the quota. Saying that it's not constitutional. Uh, the amount of signatures, just because of the logistics of it. We should all be campaigning. And yeah. one can say getting signatures is campaigning. It's not the same. Uh, it's not the same at all. And then, um, so the Concord decided and they broadcasted live that they were going to lower the signature requirement for ind independence only there was a part where the guy or the, the guy the judge the concord judge whatever you call them what do you call them a judge yes a judge. Yeah. okay <laughs> just making sure they um there was a part that he was discussing the signatures i can't remember his name and he declared that uh independence just for this year can only have to get a thousand and then live streaming on two different thingies went completely blank so we don't know what he said for the space of about two, three, or it's, five it's, minutes. And everyone assumed that it was the same for parties. parties. And News24 reported it like that. Everyone I reported it that parties and independent candidates only now need a thousand yeah. uh, signatures. 
And then all of a sudden, when they published the papers, parties were removed. From the wording. And everyone was shocked to the core. And then Ravonia Circle and Bosa brought another case before In the December. Concord. No, 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 no. Now. Now. Yes. The next one. No. 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 Okay. The that. other one was in December. The the actual the actual pronouncement <laughs> was in December. Orders. So okay. now in February, the pronouncement was made in this week. In fact, Monday. The Concord, in that case, the Ravonia Circle and Bosa brought before the Concord to say, but what about the parties? Yeah, but that has been since December. There's been communication back and forth. Up no, that's a points, separate case. If you say so. Yeah, it's a separate okay, case. Okay, if you disagree. So, well, it's cast in stone, actually. Okay. So, the Concord then said, we cannot hear this on an urgent basis. Yeah. Because the parties had time since June of last year, when the act was gazetted. But no one knew, because when it left Parliament, there was nothing for parties. So, the parties weren't even concerned about this. Mm. All of a sudden, the IEC started telling parties, but you also need to get signatures. We only knew that much later. Much yeah. later. I think it was uh, September, around that time. And, and then the we, parties were shocked. We knew about the court case, so we were chilled. We were thinking, this is never going to happen. And then it happened. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's actually so badly orchestrated. So there's a lot of rumors that Sir Ramaphosa actually intervened with not only the Concord, but with the IEC as well. He appointed the IEC... Uh, chief mm -hmm. and the IEC started making pronouncements against the parties, surprising. which is was very surprising. It's a plot twist and it's really contrary to all my experiences with the IEC in the past. Yeah, and you actually said that you recently think that they actually killed the line while you were talking to them. I think they had that's on me. <laughs> and that, that hasn't happened before. I thought it was my airtime that ran out, then I checked my airtime. Maybe it's that signal. But what were know. you saying to them at the time? I, I think that is the key. So I said that if they're not careful, all the unrepresented parties are going to get together and declare the elections uh, unconstitutional after they've taken place. We're not going to interfere with and the timetable. And not free and fair. We're not going to mess with the timetable. They can have their little timetable, but afterwards, they're going to hear about it. Oh, talk about the timetable. because The timetable. <laughs> and the declaration of the election. So they brought it forward as much as possible, right at the beginning. Yeah. They could have made it three months later to give everyone first, time. Uh, we had until the 20th of February to put in submissions to the Concord to lower the signature requirement for part unrepresented parties. I own sent a application, a submission. What do you call it? A submission. A submission. You should actually read All it out. All this legal jargon. I will if I can find it. We actually physically, we got a representative of ours in Gauteng to physically walk, to, not walk, drive to the Constitutional Court, hand it to them, and then we got proof that we got it back, stamped with the Constitutional Court and everything. So we sent them all our thoughts and concerns. Um, and I really thought they were going to take it seriously, and they didn't. No, what happened is they said that this is going to hamper the elections because it was already declared. Cyril rushed to declare the election date which now put the Concord in a difficult decision because mm -hmm. it was declared the Friday. Mm -hmm. And then the Monday, the Concord delivered their decision that they can't hear this on an urgent uh, basis because it will literally affect the elections. Mm -hmm. And the concern is now that people can rightfully and legitimately say that the elections cannot be free and fair. And this is what's taking place behind the scenes. Okay, so timeline. From the time we've started collecting signatures, I told everyone end of March, we probably have until the end of March to collect signatures, worst case scenario. I was hoping for a best case scenario that elections would be in August and that we'd have up until, you know, April, May to collect signatures, in which case I think we could comfortably do it. Um, but now what we heard from the president, he declared or he announced the elections, then he proclaimed, proclaimed them. And the election date is 29th of May. I mean, that's very, very, very early. Yeah. Very early. Extremely early We're in that ready. time frame. I don't believe most parties are ready because in this time you have to get all your candidates ready and approved and on the list. And for a lot of parties, that takes a lot of time to get right. And everyone was waiting for the Concord decision because it was going to affect everything. Exactly. So, okay. So the deadline we've been given. The 8th of March is when candidate lists have to be ready, when the contesting fees have to be paid, and when all parties need to have their signatures captured on the system. The 8th. It was the like eighth. early in the timeline. Everything, Very early. Everything has to happen. Everything has to happen 
on the eighth. That's in a that's in nine days. Eight. It's, it's almost as if they want to destabilize the country. No, they want to continue destabilizing the country. Continue. They don't yes. want to stop to the destabilization. Okay. Of the yes. Country. Yeah. That's basically what it boils down to. Welcome to the over two hundred people that are watching. Please like this uh, live stream so that more people can watch this. You need to know what is actually happening behind the scenes. It's super important that South Africans understand what is happening, that our elections have literally been hijacked by uh, party gangs that have now literally become a government or a, a parliamentary mafia. Um, I do have to exclude the UDM from this. Because Bante Holomisa has actually spoken out against us and says this is oh, unfair. Yeah. So I'm encouraging other parties. If you want to have any mercy in future for you to come out and say that this is unfair, call it what it is. I know this is benefiting you. But if you are watching or your supporters are watching, tell your MPs in Parliament, your councillors, whoever, to speak out against this. And don't come and say that people had uh, eight months' time to collect the signatures. This is not the case. Even if you had eight months, that would mean 50 written signatures per day for eight months. That is the amount that they asked for. And it's arbitrary. They grabbed it out of the sky, this 15%. In the U.S. Senate, you need 2,000 signatures to run. But you run as an independent. That and, is exactly what And the U.S. What population is way bigger. Way, now. way bigger. Way bigger now. So, I mean, this 15% is really shocking. I would, I would still understand people wanting to put a barrier for parties percentage-wise getting into parliament. Like a 2% barrier or 5% barrier. I, I don't believe it's the right thing to do. But then you can still contest. And people can see the size of your support. Mm -hmm. With these signatures, they are just cutting you out completely. It's a completely different playing field. Actually, I, I thought, is this could this be treasonous? Could you consider this treasonous? But no. It seems like whatever state the state is in doesn't matter. The state is all powerful. The the constitution allows the state to do it what it's doing right now. And okay? I'm not against the constitution. I'm against many uh Fatal flaws they were built into our constitution that is allowing the government to get away with us. And I don't speak of the ANC. I speak of all the parties in parliament right now. There's 14 of them. Al Jama was the last one to get a seat. All these people have all been involved in politics before. In 1994, pre-1994, they were known figures. They have made it almost impossible for anyone new to come in. Mm -hmm. Interesting, eh? Yeah. Uh, Pristine Eagle says... I mean, uh, completely new, not a breakaway of the yeah, ANC or something like that. Pristine Eagle says, Roman Mashaba says he welcomes the removal of small parties. I'd love to see that in writing. That's disgusting. That's despicable. And then Andre said the ATM also spoke out. That's uh, that's good. I think they have a seat or two, hey? What did they speak out? What did they actually say, Andres? <clears throat> Just to, re uh, just to highlight... Oh, yes. Uh, Julius Malema actually attacked the ATM leader for that. Okay. Uh, I was very surprised that Julius went and attacked the whole signature thing, saying that everyone had enough time. It's easy for them to say. If you want to make this a requirement for, for uh, parties that aren't represented yet, all the parties taking part in the election should go through the process. They mm -hmm. should all go and get this 14,000 signatures exactly. and spend time on it. Or money. They'll probably spend yeah, but money. remember, you don't get any money. Mm. They are just giving the parties more money. And now 200 million, an additional 200 million is being given to parties represented in parliament. Guess why? Because with these new regulations for the elections, it's more difficult for parties to contest. There's more effort that needs to be put in, etc. So they just gave them more money. So, so it makes it almost impossible to enter the system. I just want to comment uh, under Vanthia, my name on this computer on that side. I posted OMS digital forms as well as the employment party as well as BOSA. And please sign them. Sign everybody's. The IEC has confirmed that one person can sign for as many unrepresented parties. Yeah, you can sign for as many people as you want. 
the one thing the IEC did say to you is for these elections. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I phoned them because we are, we decided. We obviously running an, a massive campaign to help our members capture physical signatures and people are taking leave of work. People mm. are spending all their free time, even on holiday, collecting signatures. It is crazy that this is required. Anyway, our, our members, I know, are working so hard. And that's why we've, when people come and say, oh, but you shouldn't be in Parliament if you can't get 13,000 signatures. The logistics and we'll, of that. And we'll get it. Yeah, in the short it's time, about the time. The logistics of it is absolutely ridiculous. But anyway, we decided, I decided when, two days ago that I'm just going to do the digital signature thing. And it's still a proper signature. No, it's not two days ago. It's a day ago. I a day ago. You did it yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. No, no, the day before yesterday. The night before. The night before. Yes. It's like with Leave Our Kids Alone. Yeah, it was like 10 a midnight night. situation. Mm, a midnight special. Anyway, so I decided we're going to do this just as backup, just to see how many South Africans would support us anyway. We can't reach them on foot, but we can reach them online. And with the platform we're using, they actually make a signature with their mouse pad. Proper or signature, yeah. So I said it's legitimate. On the platform we're using, they say it is legally uh, recognized, the mm -hmm. signatures. And that's why it's such an awesome platform. So then I found IC and I said, listen, yeah, we are doing our best to get the physical signatures, but we're also now collecting digital signatures. But we're doing it through this platform where the signatures are considered legally recognizable. Please, will you accept those forms? And then the person I spoke to was like, hmm. Oh, then she was like, no, we can't because it's not uh, legal. But then I said, when you went and re when you registered all your voters online, was that not legal? And then she was like, okay, well, for these elections, we won't accept digital signatures, but next elections we can. So that makes me think, what is what on earth? the ruling party or what does the three major parties have in store? Why are they so wanting to hold on to power now? For what purpose? What is coming up? Because they are actually before? ganging up together and becoming a mafia, and that's yeah. the difference. None of the none of the top five that I can think of, none of the top six, no, UDM is number six, I think. None of the top five are saying a word about the signature requirements. Quiet. Because all of them, not all of them, but I know that the top two parties, they've reached their peak and they're on the way down. Yeah. I believe the, All the polls say they're on the way is down. going to be stabilizing where they are. They believe they're going to be ruling the country, but anyway. And then the other parties I also believe are they're either climbing because the top two are losing, and so there's a ceiling to how much they can climb, or they're also on the way down, depending on who you're speaking about. So they know their times are their time, their days are numbered and their time is up. And so to allow new blood in, I mean especially the ones that want to change the system. <coughs> this is especially threat. under attack. So it's, it's a nightmare. So one thing we need to speak about here is the propaganda that has been spewed out for I don't know how many years, that there are too many parties. We have A, there is. The links are further up. Just place the, the links They're there right again. There. The, the links are right there. You can just go click on them and sign. Okay. Yes, you can download and sign. Yeah, you so can. So A, I'll give you my number. Not my number. Ohm's number. Oh, so cool. every person that's willing to sign can do that, and you can down you can <clears throat> download the form. It's on all the social media, right? And then you can uh, fill in that form. The regulation says that form or any similar form. Mm -hmm. That's what the regulation says. So how can the IEC decide that they won't accept certain things, but other things they will accept? So let's discuss it because Cindy just said so. Just to clarify. Are the digital signatures not going to be accepted? No, it's not that simple. Cindy, the, that can be contested. Okay, so the digital signatures do need to carry on. It's <clears throat> super important while the manager, man, manual signatures carry on for all the parties. So if you can digitally sign for any party, do so. Just as a matter of principle, I will sign for any party. I will share any party's details on any of the platforms that I have. Yeah. And I would ask people to go and sign for them. MK party, any party, any party, I don't care. If you care about democracy, you should sign everyone's forms. It's all about the right that you have to be able to vote for the people that you choose. That is a true democracy. 
These people that want to stop what they call smaller parties. There is no such thing as a smaller party. That's the point in contesting There's the elections. There's only such a thing as an ungovernment-sponsored party. Yes. That's about it. It's so frustrating, and I've explained it so many times. Like, if you have a budget of a multinational corporation, and then someone comes up with a small little business idea in a small little local community, you can't compare both. Uh, the one, the local person might have a better product, but the one with the bigger marketing budget is going to do better. And that's exactly what's happening with government funding. But tax, they're using your tax money taxpayers' money to fund for it. political parties. So, I mean, this is why you want them to do away with tax is funding the you parties in to, parliament. You can go to OM's website and read our manifesto. We believe in a democracy without political parties. Even OM itself will cease to exist if this comes into being. Uh, but I just want to read... Okay, firstly, if ever you find yourself bored at work or even bored at home, instead of going onto TikTok, go to elections.org.za and I must say the website is great. It has all the information on how our electoral system works on that website. So educate yourselves. Um, here at the bottom, it says, if you are you, your party or candidate, it says, where is it now? No, we're going to have to place those links again. Off. Oh, and advert, apparently. Advert. On the live stream. Oh, we need to stop. How do we do that? So, in the case of the regional list for National Assembly, in a form mm -hmm. similar to that appendix... And that's what they say, a form similar to. So, Cindy, you were asking, will the IEC accept this? We believe they technically should have no choice. They have declared they're not going to accept digital signatures, but on what grounds? A bunch of unrepresented parties and OM are trying to get together to meet with the IEC commissioner, or at least if, if we can't meet with him, put forward a letter or email or something declaring that we think is ridiculous because what is the difference really? Are you sharing the links again? Yeah, I'm going okay. to be you sharing the it. link. How did you find yeah. it? Oh, you clicked the... Okay, yeah, I just went in. So here's the links where you can sign for... Um, You can share it uh, wherever you can. Please sign it right now. It'll yeah. open up a new tab in YouTube and then you can sign it. Sign for all three... Oh, in BOSA and unemployment. Yes, for BOSA. I would have more parties, but not everyone has sent. If more people send, we will put it. Um, we, will, we, we, will. we will post it, yes. If you can just uh, put the other one in as well. But it's very important yeah. to understand the timelines that they gave. When they presented the timeline, there was 10 days, 11 days. Mm. 11 mm. days and yeah, so they, could have, the they could have made that a month there was something relevant when the timeline was declared when was that made oh, well, after the Concord made their statement that they're not going to hear the matter urgently yeah, the next instantly. day the next day the timeline, timeline was, out. Was, was, was out yeah. so we believe that this was all, all collusion um, between the IEC the Concord and Silver and Maposa. And this is not how our government is supposed to work. That is unconstitutional. So he's not allowed to interfere there, but interference is clear. Mm -hmm. Actually, it all started for me when the when we had that live blackout for two to five minutes on both mm. EWN, I think, IRL, I can't remember, but on both channels, on both live streams, blackout for just that little portion when the judge finished speaking about independent quotas and started speaking about party quotas. I find that extremely yeah. suspicious. Alan, do the form scan if you can. Alien. Alien, uh, alien sorry. Alien. Yeah, Alien Cyborg. I love that name. Okay. So <laughs> if you can do the form scan, that is better. If you can get your friends to sign, whoever else to sign, it's a matter of principle um, to actually do that. So, I mean, there's so many people working at getting these signatures and they've been working tirelessly and they've done an excellent job. So it's just a time frame that the fact that OM has the support is not a question. We know that OM has the support. Okay, it's some questions. Naidu Naidu says, good evening. How do we send the signatures we collect? I just put the OM's number there. You take a picture of the form, a nice clear picture of the whole A4 and what's up, what's up to that number. And then to Alien Cyborg, you can do the same. AJ says, 300 parties 
well, not all 300 are going to contest, but 300 parties by 300,000 fee equals 90 million. What's IEC doing with that money? The IEC says things like it's firstly their election staff. It's running by-elections and local elections. It's printing ballot papers. It's having the ballot boxes. But if you make it to parliament, the money goes back yes. to you. So they're rewarding you if you make it into parliament. Then it doesn't go towards that. <clears throat> so it's almost like they need just enough people to fund this lot. But for the elections, they've made over a billion rand available. So I don't really buy that. I, I That is small change, really. It is to make it difficult. And that is fine. But a mechanical thing like signatures, I mean, really. In the short time frame. Yeah. What part don't they understand? No, they don't want to. It was an easy thing they could do. And you should ask yourself why parties like the Democratic Alliance that makes as if they believe in democracy. Sorry, just join. But are you guys starting a political party? I started the Organic Humanity Movement in 2017. We were registered in December 2018 and we've contested local government elections in 2021 as well as a whole bunch of by-elections our recent by-election we beat the eff by eight votes but we didn't win you got two percent <laughs> yes and yeah, the media the at first refused to write about us and then in the last by-election where we did absolutely zero campaigning because of something interesting that happened um we still got 12 votes in a by-election so we have been, I, OM, when I say we, OM has been going strong for a good five years as a political party, and we're trying to contest the 2024 elections, however many barriers have been put in place. But the thing is, the, the support, if you look at the average amount that people, if 2% uh, of people, if you just get seven votes on average per uh, VD, ward. per ward, sorry, uh, in the country, OM would get two or three seats in Parliament. So, and that's about what OM has been getting in, in by-elections, contesting by-elections. So it's it's legitimate that OM can get a seat in Parliament and then promote direct elections. Let's just explain why we are doing this. I mean, uh, that we want the president to be elected directly so we can hold them accountable. So what's happening right now cannot take place ever again. What is happening right now can never happen in a direct election no, system. Can't. Where you vote for your MPs, the person directly, we vote for the president directly, you vote for your mayor directly, you vote for your councillors directly, you can hold them directly to account. But that's um, okay. I just put the website on the website, you can get a link to the manifesto and you can read all the changes we want to make. We want to make a lot of changes. I personally am super excited to live in a country that has a government that looks like what we're no. proposing. I like what Andres is saying. Um, just explain why OM decided to contest the 2024 elections. Because the the original plan was always for 2026 and 2029, correct? Always, yeah. Yeah. So w why was the decision made to contest 2024? Publicity. Because if we're contesting, then media will have no choice but to invite us to their talks and debates and all the rest. So it's all about people knowing that we want system change. Yeah. To be known. It was only ever for publicity. And then if we do get a seat, that's continued publicity until. Yeah. But it was the target was always 2026 and then 2029 to have changed the whole system yeah. and to be on our way to a new country. So, Andrew, so, uh, thank you, Sharon, for signing all of those forms. If everyone else can do the same, just scroll up the chat Thanks, and find the links to the Employment Party, BOSA and OM. And sign. When you sign, all you're doing is saying that you have no objections to us being on the ballot paper. So I will be putting out the links. Uh, earlier, I had the, uh, the spokesperson for BOSA. I, I spoke to him. He sent me the link for, for BOSA. I will be putting it on all the platforms that I have. Please go and sign. BOSA is also fighting for direct elections. Mm -hmm. They believe in directly electing the president and uh, the MPs in parliament. Now, people might, there might be many parties that get on the, the system change bandwagon and they might want to do it in different ways. But I think it's time for an alliance <coughs> of people that want to change the system. Yeah, but realize it's not a coalition, it's an alliance. Yeah, it has nothing to do with a coalition. And people are confused. Yeah, no, coalition <laughs> is a very different thing. In fact, I had someone contact me earlier today to say, with the would go into coalitions, and I said, absolutely not. Okay, ultimately, at the end of the day, what the government has done, and I have to say the government, because it's the ruling party, it's the IEC, it's the constitutional court, who would have thought? It's a whole bunch of 
uh, stakeholders, a word government likes to use a lot. It's all a bunch of stake or government stakeholders. What the government has done for the first time in our 30 years of democracy, they've given a reason for unrepresented parties to actually unite. Yeah. For, there's, a, there's a cause strong enough. And I don't think they consider that. Maybe they think we're too weak. Maybe they think I we're think not they, resourced enough. But I think, and I'm very excited about this. I'm actually getting goosebumps as I'm thinking of this. I think the positive outcome from what they are doing to the unrepresented parties is going to shock them. <laughs> it's going to shock them completely. So you must just understand that uh, we are on a stronger footing than ever. Uh, Om has done everything, and most other unrepresented parties have done everything to gather the money to be able to contest, and everything else was necessary, and then this barrier was just thrown in their path. Mm. It would have been better if... if, uh, if uh, New Nation never went to the Concord. 100%. And you said in the beginning this was going to be a huge subversion. I went to a lot of their meetings and I was just so suspicious. <laughs> but that's just my nature. I'm suspicious of everything. But, so I'm um, sure many of the people had really good intentions with us. But you knew that was this was going to be turned against us. Just, and now it's happened. I just could see it. But anyway. You could feel it at the time. I just, I don't like the legal system personally. And I saw that the New Nation Movement was using the legal means to change the system. Okay, it makes sense. If and it I'm wasn't sure for the case, I would be contesting now without We would have been campaigning a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, a long time ago. We would have put the <laughs> money in the IEC's account and we would have had our candidates approved. And trained and ready And how to many campaign. candidates are there? We have 21. So almost 21 Ish. candidates. That's Ish. a large group of candidates. But they I have mean, not gone awesome. through the approval process and they have yeah. not been trained or done any of the things that I would have done under normal circumstances. So we're just winging everything now. But that's just how it has to be. Thanks, everyone that signed for all. Um, as the days go by and more parties send me their links, I will post it here and... Um, on our community channels, on our Telegrams, on our Facebooks and everywhere. So, yes, don't uh, get confused. This is about us believing that you, we should show that parties should have the right to contest so that people can vote for them. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with a long ballot. That's a healthy democracy. A healthy democracy. The fact that the DA hasn't been able to become the ruling party tells you that there's a problem and that's why they are shrinking in the polls. So someone said what's wrong with this country is that there's so many parties. No. What's wrong with the country is that there haven't been enough of the right kind of parties. Correct. And we need to get the right parties in. I believe that'll start happening now and the public awareness will take place. And what's happening behind the scenes now really is really exciting, isn't it? I think so. I've already started making contact with all unrepresented parties. There has been two. There have been two members. One has done uh, almost, I'd say, eighty percent of capturing all the nationally registered parties' contact information and Facebook following and all the rest on a little Excel form for us. And I am starting to contact all of them, and we're going to see where we can all work together. Imagine if all three hundred of us can work together. Well, if you can get them to uh, agree to system change, which I think is fairly easy. It's not easy. about that. Yeah. It's about uh, really being in opposition to the stupid government that we have and the current parties that exist and taking away the barriers that are messing up our democracy right now. The system was better. The Constitution said anyone can get involved in the political arena. And in order to do so, all you have to do is pay 500 rand and get a thousand signatures. You could be your, and you register your party on your own. You yeah. make your mom and your aunt and your yeah. grandma the freaking executive. And you're good to go. The, it was a very open and transparent system. Okay, where is, the, uh, where is the other parties one as well? I'll post them again. I have There's it. more I'll post people it. looking for it. I have it. I have it. I okay. Have it. So Lauren's going to post it quickly. So one thing that's uh, very important to understand yeah. is that the timeline that lined up, I believe, was manipulated. How many parties recently during the IEC training found out they have to do the 14,000 signatures? Now in February. Now in February, quite a for number. For the first time, loads of parties found out for the first time that they need to get 14,000 signatures. The IEC is supposed to educate everyone as to the Electoral Act. They have not done that. And they are supposed to do it in layman's terms so that anyone 
in any town, anywhere in the middle of nowhere, can actually contest in the elections. That is what a true democracy is. But this mafia parliament, government that we have now, is saying out with all the smaller parties. They want them gone. They don't want them to be able to contest. And uh, all that will happen is Om will become stronger. All these other smaller parties will just become stronger. Well, as Andre said, our focus will then, if we don't get to contest, our immediate focus will go to 2026. And and lo- uh, by-elections, eh? Of course. Lots of by-elections. We are doing two by-elections coming a up. A lot of people don't even know that by-elections exist. Who knows what a by-election is? Explain to people is. what a by-election is. What is a by-election? Okay, so by-elections happen at local government level. Okay, so firstly, there's three spheres of government, national, provincial, and local. Each sphere has its own set of responsibilities. For instance, local government can only administer certain things that national can't, and national government can administer certain things that local can't. So national, provincial, and local have their legislatures. That's where laws are made and policies decided. And at local government level, we have our municipalities with their municipal councils. In the municipal council are ward councillors that meet together to decide how the municipality is going to go forward. And then every once in a while, a councillor in that council will either get fired or leave their job or die. And if they do any one of those three things, there's a vacancy. And there cannot, by law, be a vacancy for more than three months. And that's why elections happen again in that ward, only for that ward, for nowhere else. And then what happens is that all the parties willing and able contest and you have an opportunity to vote in someone brand new if you want to. So by-elections are a little bit weird logistically because they happen during the week from 7 a.m. to either 7 p.m. or 9 p.m. So most people are working throughout the day. It's not declared a public holiday or anything. So the voter turnout at base is usually around 30%. Very very small. small. So we contest by-elections mainly just for advertising because sometimes a local newspaper will cover either the candidate or the party itself. They often do that, actually. That is really, really cool. And then uh, what happens after that is that whoever votes, doesn't matter who they vote for, they still get to see Ohm's logo. So we see by-elections as very valuable advertising. It's also good practice for real elections. It helps our members learn what it takes to run a voting station to be an observer, to count, uh, to observe the counting process during the counting of votes. So all all around, by-elections are awesome, and we're contesting Pretoria, Tswane, and Mogali City in April. Can't wait for that, because it's quite yeah, a Yeah, because of- now people can focus in those areas, and I think that makes a big difference, because uh, I think I will probably be financially in a better situation to do that at this stage. Hmm. If, yeah, if if you don't contest in national elections. Well, more people know about us now. So, yeah. So, I just want to revisit the idea that, okay, so a lot of people say... Margo many... just said 6,109 ballots. I thought so. Thanks, Margo, for the awesome. update. That's awesome. Thanks. We have such an awesome team of sig- signature capturers that are working every single day in between all their responsibilities. And they're capture. not getting paid. These people are volunteers. No. We have probably 50 strong people volunteering for OM. And I think that's really, really awesome. It's quite a strong, I see that as a sign of a strong organization. Mm. When people are willing to work for free, there's even a member, as I said, working on his holiday to get signatures, Some which taking is leave. terrible. Yeah. It's, um, so, yeah. People are really committed. And, and, and I think all these parties will carry on to the last moment. Mm. I think it's important to prove that we have the amount of signatures. And, and if they dismiss those signatures, it's on them because they have to prove why it is not another form, as the regulations say. And that can be taken to court. And um, it, it, it really puts them in a bad light internationally because you could internationally now say that for the first time, our elections are definitely not free and fair. And you could get people in other countries getting behind you. And um, they, are, they are fearing this, aren't they? So with the digital signatures, it, the, all the law says, all the electoral act says, is that you need to gather the signatures in the prescribed manner by the IEC. So however the IEC prescribes it. 
So it's literally just an IEC decision. The commissioner can be like, oh, let's allow our signatures or oh, let's not allow uh, digital signatures. It's literally the decision of the IEC. It's not written in law. The digital is not recognized. It's simply their decision. So I like I, what Nick says there. What does he say? The long-term strategy of direct mm. elections from the lowest level town, yes, will eventually snowball and overtake mm -hmm. these rigs. Yep, that's true. The, the plan cannot be stopped. And I think they know their okay. time is short. So here's the other slight obstacle. We get the signatures. We feel great about that. We pay Thanks, the Jane. contesting fee of 300,000 rand, which is not a small amount of money. It, it's been given to us by members, Donating. a lot of whom don't actually have it to spare, but understand the desperate situation the country's in. So then we pay that, and now because of the independent and how the 400 seats are now divided, you actually need a lot more seats to get in. So it becomes a lot more A lot difficult. more votes lot to more actually votes get a seat. To get a yeah. seat, sorry. You need a lot more yeah. votes to get a seat. So then we run the risk of paying that fee and not actually getting a seat. More people that want the... And usually what happens is that the... Um, IC will go and train everyone just before the elections on how the calculations are going to happen and all of that. And they haven't done that. They have not done that at all because there's no time, because the timeline, everything's just sprung upon us. And I remember Tapon Becky said he would advise a later election. Yes. Because that so that be, everyone can prepare. That would be more in line with our democracy. But anyway. It's funny. The ANC is rushing. The DA is rushing. Mm. And the EFF is rushing. They want the elections now. Mm. Everyone else wanted more time yeah there's so many uncertain things that happen in such a short space of time including the concord ruling that happened late in december just before the holidays hmm. this is now the end of february it's just two months later no time and that was holidays it was so well planned wasn't it beautiful the timing of the ruling Marlene says, should we not get onto the should we not get onto the ballot will only be refunded no you only get refunded if you get a seat then you get that money back. If you contest and you don't get a seat, you don't get the money. So a lot of the parties... No, if you don't get onto the ballot, you won't pay the money. So, um, so no. If we not... get the signatures, we have to make the payment the same yes, day. Yeah. If we don't get enough seats to... If we don't get enough votes to get a seat, then we don't get the money yes, back. Yes, correct. If we get at least one seat, we get the money back. And then the whole plan is that you would have had... You would, you would be on the ballot. That's why she's saying if you're not on the ballot. Okay. In the negative. So yeah. we not get onto the ballot. We'll yeah. only be refunded. No. Uh, Cindy's asking... Well, you wouldn't have paid the money, Molly. No, we would have. Please. Yeah, the MK party especially. Um, they are polling at more than 10% at the moment. So if the MK party has to actually... Uh, be on the ballot, it'll be their worst nightmare. The ANC will definitely lose power for the first time. Definitely. So, here's what I believe the ANC is planning. They are planning on getting a certain... Cyril Ramaphosa promised that they will get a two-thirds majority in these elections. Hmm. How are they planning to do this? Um, Neil De Beer actually of the UIM actually spelt it out and he's 100% correct that, and this is not an endorsement, I do not support <laughs> the moonshot pact or whatever people want to call it. And how many of the parties on the moonshot pact is not going to be on the ballot? So there won't be a pact, no. there won't be much of a pact left, will there? Very awkward. But in any case, that the, it will be a logistical election, they will spend. 2 billion rand to literally ferry 7 million people to the polls. Give them a meal, a t-shirt, something, and maybe even money, and buy a vote, literally for 7 million people. And then with the rest of the people that usually vote for them, they will get a two-thirds majority again. Absolutely. And this is what's being planned behind the scenes. So you need to understand that that's not rigged elections. This is mafia state. That's what it is. And uh, let me tell you something. If the DA and the EFF could do it, they would do exactly the same thing. In fact, I have seen mm -hmm. the DA drive people to the voting booths, offer them freaking donuts and a T-shirt and a cap in certain instances. So been there, done it, seen it. 
Um, it's not just African National Congress. I've seen people in the DA offer people shoes and clothes and all sorts to vote for them in an internal election. It is a dog show. It is disgusting. And that's why there's no elections within home. No, there's not. <laughs> no contesting or infighting. No. That is why the plan will work. So this mafia state is a huge problem. Thanks for the almost 200 likes. And the 244 people watching, it's really been uh, awesome to see that many people in this live stream. I think by the end of the live stream, we've probably had over a 1,000 people watch. Mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully a lot of people more. It's almost an hour now. Is there any last thing that you would want to say? Maybe we yeah, there is something else. We're not a two-party state. I'm so sick of people saying if you don't, mm -hmm. if you vote for any other party besides the opposition, um, you're just strengthening the ANC. That's, that's absolute nonsense. I can't believe people say that because we are not a two-party state. Let me paint a different scenario for everyone that says that. We have 400 seats. It'd be far better that there are, uh, where, say, 10 parties, each with an equal distribution of power. So instead of one being 60% and another one being 30% and another one being 15%, it's better to have a lot of parties with 10%. That's a more true reflection of democracy. So these two-party state propagandist idiots need to stop and think about what they're actually saying because what they're declaring is that there can only be one of two dictatorship options. Meanwhile, um, it's a majority rule mindset. Meanwhile, what we can rather have is proper democracy. Even in the current system, it's better to have lots of parties with a small percentage than a couple of parties with a big bulky percentage. And I, I, I actually do want to thank the people that is obviously putting out information there that don't want to get politically connected necessarily uh that uh, two of the own members uh, uh marlene and phil that actually responded to one of my tweets that professor tim noakes retweeted that is significant it's significant that the founder of the ubuntu party <laughs> actually posted Sorry. the manifesto launch of own what? Oh, yeah, yeah. So thank you. Uh, yeah. It's also important that a person with a large Twitter following uh, that is fighting for an independent South Africa uh, has actually reposted some of the own items. And it shows that people are slowly but surely. God, yeah. What is funny? Andres did it again. What? May it rain on election. <laughs> 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 um, that, that these people are starting to show their support for mm -hmm. for what Omi is doing, mm -hmm. and I really, <laughs> Andres, what have you done to Lauren? That's hilarious. Like when you said, <laughs> if you hate politics, vote Omi. This is this tops that, in my opinion. But you know, it doesn't matter what happens with the twenty twenty four elections. Omi is stronger than ever. And the message will get out there. And I believe with what's happening now that um will be seen in the media. Mm. There will probably be public statements made post the elections, pre the elections, etc. Yeah. So I think um can get a lot of mileage out of this. And perhaps some more united front with unrepresented parties. Doesn't yeah. mean we're joining, we're not coalitioning, but we will be more organized, even in mobilizing our I'll own. I'll call members. it an alliance for an alliance, system yeah. change. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't get confused. I hope people don't get confused. No, I think people know the difference between oh, uh, being aligned along certain lines while still having your identity. Mm. Uh, uh, what these people are doing, coalitions, is a completely different thing where you're actually yeah. signed no. to a document. No, when That's we say horrible. we're going to rock up at this place at this time, then all of us will go onto WhatsApp and gather our members. 100,000 people outside Parliament. Nah? <laughs> so you resign, Blixen, so resign. Wow. I'm sure we'll all be yeah. open to ideas. But, yeah, I, th I think uh, exciting times ahead. I'm very excited. Uh, we're going to carry on uh, getting the signatures. Mm -hmm. So we have eight days. If you can't, today is almost done. So eight days, I guess, starting from tomorrow morning. We, we're not quite halfway. I'm Oof. not sure. Oh. Oh. I'm not sure where the other parties are at. People are very guarded. I'm not telling everyone. We have 4,000. We have 5,000. Other parties are so guarded with how many signatures they have. Yeah, I must actually done exceptionally well. I, yeah. I just want to tell all of you that I can tell you that I think most people are shocked at what Omer's achieved. And 
the I I believe Omos is the most active membership on the ground. That's not know. being paid. That's not being paid. Yes. There's no employment opportunity. No one's yeah. doing it. No one's think, promising nothing. No one's doing it because they think they're going to become a counselor. Correct. Yeah. They're doing it genuinely because they see the vision. When, when are these two by-elections? April only. I want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's Mugali. Where is it? Mugali City. Mugali City. And we already have Where candidates. Where is that again? It's, uh, we stayed there. Yes, we did. It's practically Joburg. It's further north, isn't it? It's close to Lansaria. Lansaria. Lansaria, uh, okay. <laughs> and then uh, the other one is in Swane. Swane, okay. Some, by some that's Lugani Gulf estate. Okay. Yeah. Let's tackle it. it. <laughs> door to door to door. I think a lot of effort can be put in. I stopped the ad now. Thank you. Earlier, we must have missed it. Mm. Sorry about that, people. So, Anna Marie, thank you. Anna Marie is one of our... Freedom fighters on the ground, despite, yeah, there's many, uh, despite many, the many challenges, or maybe chat, because yeah. of the challenges, this is the most exciting time and the um, a most incredible initiative. And so, uh, to yeah, so people, if the um, for some reason um, the IEC decides to absolutely screw over OM um, uh, and the other parties, we will <laughs> just fight on. Our plan is a, a plan to have the country transformed into a new system by 2029. Before 2030 kicks in, 2026 was our year, remember? 2026. That was always the focus year, 2024. To be organized. Remember the yeah. four phases? Recruitment, Correct. organization, then mobilization. So we need to really build. And I think with these elections now, uh, I think there's going to be plenty of media around what has happened there's with the elections. There's nothing like local government elections to teach you what you need and how organized you need to be to take over government. So 2026 was always my exciting year where we do that, where we have someone in every ward in as many wards as possible. There's over 20,000 voting stations, and technically you want a couple of members in every voting station, but it's not always practical because some areas are extremely rural and very ANC or very specific, very IFP, etc. But for the most part, if you look at the metros and then a couple of other areas, mm. um, I, I, my first goal is to have... At 77, the number worked out is 77, where we already have a lot of support. 77 wards absolutely sorted. And then um, from there, we branch off from there. Mm. I think once we reach that, there'll be like the snowball domino effect. Yeah, very, very quickly from there. So we are, you guys are doing an awesome job at this stage. The online signatures is, is running it went over 2,000, right? I don't Is know anyone here time. in Stellenbosch? We're going to be in Stellenbosch on Friday, I think. So let me know. For signatures. For signatures. Yeah. And if anyone's going to have a table, if there's going to be tables up in Gauteng on the weekend or whatever, it's go and visit. It's happening all the time. So just let me uh, put my own number in here again. Yeah. So just contact Lauren and As she can let WhatsApp. you know yeah, WhatsApp where these tables will be. Go and meet the Omis there with a new... Um, um, gazebos and tablecloths and banners and everything. The ones in Gauteng, at least. I think yeah, it's going to be a little Gauteng, more fluid yeah. than that this weekend. Eh? Is it's it? going to be, be interesting. Yeah. So, um, yeah, what about the own Facebook group and leave our kids alone? Yes, I'm putting in the digital form. So, you know what? When it comes to the physical form, how many people have a printer at home? And even if you do have a printer at home, how many people are actually willing to print something, sign it, and then send it back? If you are willing to print something and sign it and send it back, if it's a single signature, do it. The people will capture it. Okay, Jeffrey Spay has an info table on Saturday. So, if you're around, JPay is so small, you just have to like drive in two kilometers and you'll probably see his own somewhere. Oh, but Areas like Jeffreys Bay, Own can really focus to make that town theirs. Yes. Um, and and these are things that people need to do. Um, focus on areas. That's exactly what the Patriotic Alliance did. They focused on one area, worked really hard, and uh, then got the majority support and then moved on to others. And I think it's a good strategy instead of uh, being spread everywhere and being spread thin. They have teams focus. Marco says gathering handwritten signatures are unbelievably difficult. We there have been are. actively gathering since November and it doesn't get easier. The government was very clever. with Very this clever. Absolutely. Mm. So just know that you have not done badly. You have done exceptionally well. 
I mean, there's no place in the world where anyone is required to do this. No, nowhere in the nowhere. world. Nowhere in the world. You know, in other areas, there, there's just blatant dictatorships. Yeah. We're like, I'm the supreme leader and there's nothing you can do about it. South Africa is just like trying to look like a democracy. It's the mafia. Mm. So, um, yeah, they, we're going to be all over the place. Send us a WhatsApp and we'll, if you're in the area, we'll tell you where we're going to have own representatives doing things like collecting signatures. Um what else? Kruger's dog, Marina I think said. Yeah. Mugali said. Pretty much Kruger's yeah. dog. We're going to probably be at a halfway mark tomorrow with signatures. I can't tell you where the other parties are at because I don't say. I do, but I go and speak, sign for them, please. I just speak to two out. parties based in Limpopo in the Northwest who have gathered their signatures, which is amazing for national and for their regions, mm. which I think is fantastic. Yeah, but some of those parties are regional. They already have a huge ground yeah. base. And yeah. they've been around for a very long yeah, time. Yeah, for a long so it's time. Awesome. Yeah. I'm very impressed. Omi is actually very new. <laughs> I can't wait to see. Omi is only one election cycle old. <laughs> oh, no. it's like Shit. a baby still. Yeah. Practically a baby. So, yeah, we'll keep you updated on all the general platforms. Please go and like the Organic Humanity Movement's Facebook page, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. We have it on all. We have a profile everywhere. Oh, that is awesome. My oh. eldest person to sign Omi's form is 103 years old this year, Audrey. That's awesome. That's adorable. She stole the whole fam family to sign a vote for him. Amazing. So, so we, we've done everything on our side. We've worked feverishly in updating people. We'll keep on doing that. So you will update the people on the, the numbers as they happen. So, Gregory, it's the Organic Humanity Movement. Organic Humanity It's just Movement. Organic Humanity yeah. on Facebook and on all the other things. Organic Humanity Movement. But the it's website easy. is om.org.za. And oh, OM is the oh, symbol oh, for oh, resistance. Oh, that's what we are. Oh, that's my screen. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> very confusing. Okay, cool. So that's it. I think it's very sad that most people are uneducated about the political system. So telling them about the changes just flies over their head. Please go to elections.org.za in your spare time and educate yourself on the uh, electoral system and encourage other people to do the same. Did them now share the digital form? I don't know. Oh, I, I think wow. that was Marlene's message that uh, Phil shared and then Tim Noakes retweeted it. Yeah. So it's really awesome to see, uh, you know, I was contacted by, by someone that's promoting, uh, like I said earlier, uh, independent South Africa. You want South Africa to be independent from corporate and, and uh, government control and outside influences, especially... Sounds and, like he's been on the independent living page. <laughs> well, yeah. He, well, he has a large Twitter following. He's built up a large Twitter following. And um, I've spoken to him at length in the past. And um, yeah, hopefully people like that will will try and support what Omi is doing, which is exactly that, for us to be independent human beings. And the beautiful thing is when people ask you good questions, and he asked me very pertinent questions. Uh, will Om ever join a coalition? <laughs> Which is an easy answer. No. And um, what basically Om's mission is, uh, which is to change the system. And uh, so it's a very simple thing. Most people can get behind it. I believe many of these other parties can get behind it. Besides all the other things they stand for, uh, they can get behind it because they can run as independents in the new system and promote the ideas that they have. Wow, that's amazing, Robin. Three of us went to Durban Beachfront today, gathered 110 signatures. It was great. Wow, that is well. really awesome. Please, Thanks so much. Please email it to me or WhatsApp it to me as soon as possible so we can capture that. Yeah. It's great that uh, besides the digital thing, which is going crazy, we're still getting a lot of physical signatures. We need, we need physical signatures too. I think if Owen gets a lot of the physical signatures, they can see that since... Uh, December, when it really started in earnest, that in three months, how many Om has gotten? So if there was six months, Om would have been able to get the total. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not a problem getting the total at all. Uh, it's the physical time. But you know the government might just say tough luck? We decided well, to Well, I'm sure they will. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure they have. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're in trouble, aren't they? They know that they're on their way out, um, that it's all coming to an end. And uh, put yourself in their shoes. They're not in a good place right now. Mm. They are panicking because a lot of people uh, has been grafting for other people.
to have a position and earn a salary, these career politicians. They are not employable, as you've always said, outside of politics. Mm -mm. So they're in deep trouble. They would not have a job outside of politics. Exactly. I'm sharing the links one last time. And, and please, then we'll out probably there close, in eh? the real world, go and sign as many parties forms as you can. Yeah, go and sign the party forms. We've got three tonight. Uh, BOSA and the Employment Party, as well as OMS. Well, WhatsApp 20, written signatures tonight, sent a link for electronic signatures everywhere. Thanks, Gerda. Thank you. The other thing is, the IC keeps saying they think it's going to be the longest ballot paper in history. It's not. It's so the, the signatures, handwritten signatures, is about 4,459. That's amazing. I mean, if OMS can get to 5,000 uh, now soon, that, that's unbelievable. That's a lot of signatures to get. I don't think people have done the maths. I think Michael Louis did the math, and he said if you pay 50 people full time, to full time, you. it'll take them six months yeah. to gather 14,000 signatures. And that's why they went to uh, the Concord. And the Concord wouldn't pronounce on parties. That was It was almost like I was in the twilight zone. I couldn't believe it. And that part of the, the uh, pronouncement was blacked out yeah. on TV. And it's so suspicious. On two channels, which mm -hmm. is gone. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not going to tell you what I think is happening behind the scenes, but uh, I believe the U.S. is involved and some um, agency within the U.S. <laughs> That's as much you as I You gave away say. the one acronym now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, Hillary says, Head Starts of with a crab. With professor who lectures in political science. Oh, cool. He says, approach the students there at, and at UCT. So we actually inquired about having a table up at Stellenbosch University. And the people that uh, we spoke to said, no, <laughs> nothing to do with politics or religion is allowed officially. But you must understand, if uh, um cannot uh, contest these elections, if the IC makes it impossible, uh, which is almost unthinkable, but if, if they do that, OM is just going to gun ahead for the next by-election and the 2026 local government election. Not just that, we just go growing and becoming more Grow, organized yeah. as time goes. And you know what's going to happen? You know what's happen? What? While the mafia sits in caucus, they're just going to make more and more laws to make speaking on public platforms yeah. like Facebook more difficult. They're going to make, um, you know that what act? That, yes, that the, terrorism. the Terrorism Act, yes. Anyone that speaks out against the state. Or is, even, they'll even say if you speak out against the constitution. Yeah. It's going to be like North Korea. We're not we speaking to... out against a constitution. We are speaking out against some of the content in our current constitution. It needs an overall. Mm. We're not anti-constitution. We're anti uh, the fact that the government has the right to protect your life and you don't have that right, for instance. And there's many other things. Mm. But I worry it's going to go into that true communist state where you have to like smile when you're in the presence of Absolutely. the supreme leader because otherwise you're getting your head chopped off or something. Yeah. Right? So I, I do Thanks, think Linda. that um, what's coming is a lot more legislation to stifle freedom of speech, freedom of association. Yeah, all of you have the manifesto now, which is mm. really awesome. That document that you can use everywhere, and maybe it should be shared over and over and over. It is on the website. You can just go straight to the website yeah. to download it. And, share and it I think, everywhere. ironically, uh, OMA might actually get more traction for being, not being allowed in the elections, if that is the case than actually being in the elections. Mm. You know, the, the only reason I want us to be able to contest and get a seat now is because of the amount of effort everyone is putting. Yeah, exactly. It would be so unfair. I, it is unfair. Work. This is ridiculous. It's crazy. But we'll see what they say. But um, just understand whatever happens, the own plan continues. We have to think long term mm. with everything that, that, that we are doing. We and, do. Um, I mean, your mind is always long term. I do think long term. Yeah. For some reason. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm excited for whatever happens. I do think we're going to get the signatures. Yeah. And I do think we're going to pay the money. And I just hope that the calculations aren't manipulated such that we can't get a reasonable seat with a reasonable amount of votes, like with the previous calculations. Uh, you need double because <laughs> it's half the seat. But even if not as many independents come forward. You see, this is the problem. The independents are now only contesting within the 200 seats. But that's just going to benefit the top parties. It is. Again, that's the whole point. That's what everyone is saying. That's what they have 
come forward with a brilliant system to screw over the smaller parties already in parliament. Okay. So they are more screwed now. Only the top parties benefit from this. This is why the DA is clever, bringing these people into their moonshot pact. Mm. Because they know that those people are finished. They don't stand a chance yep. in, this, in this new system they've created. You literally have to come in with a bang and know that you have massive support already. Like what MK has got, basically, Jacob Zuma. Uh, Hillary says, I asked the committee of Nordic Environmental Action Group if I could get signatures at the AGM, <laughs> but they also said no politics. So I handed a fly out to every person as they left. Thanks, Hillary. Hillary is also another one of our warriors that have been absolutely Oh, busy. we have so many warriors out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just thanks so much for all your effort. And the effort will continue to the last. Yeah. Yeah. They would have to make the ridiculous call. Yep. It'll be on their heads. Yeah. But thanks so much for joining us. It's been an hour and 15 minutes now. It's a marathon session. There's a lot that we discussed. If you came in late, maybe go and watch the beginning where we went through the timeline of everything that took place. Just a quick summary. Um, there was a Concord uh, ruling in 2020 where the Concord said that the Electoral Act is unconstitutional and illegal, which means that our current government is elected fraudulently. Okay? Mm -hmm. It is a fraud. They were given two years to rectify it. They didn't rectify it in two years. At the time, I said... They will not rectify it. It was a landmark ruling because they said that independent people should be able to run for office. But the first thing Lawrence said, this was going to be the biggest subversion and we are going to pay for this. You're absolutely right. Although I didn't predict that. I thought you were negative at the time, but you were absolutely right. When have you never been right? You've always been right about these things. Except for when you're right. <laughs> 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 One of us is going to be right. That's hilarious. So... What happened was they came up with an act and they decided, okay, how can we shaft these people? We're going to find a way for independents to run, but we're going to make it impossible for them to get the majority in parliament because we will only allow them to run within half of the seats. So that's the first thing. So they cannot get a majority. If independents get all of the half, they are still not the majority. So it's pointless. You cannot run as an independent and become the president of the country. You cannot. It isn't possible. Because we don't vote for the president. No, actually. because we don't vote for the president. Mm -hmm. They would vote in parliament for the president. But here's the kicker. You now have to pay money, 20,000 rand, in each of the areas. Thanks so much, Chris. In each of the regions, which is the nine provinces. So you would have to pay 180000 to contest in all of them, but you have to get the uh, prerequisite votes in one of those to get a seat. Any excess vote you get gets given to the bigger parties proportionally. So you are literally canvassing for votes as an independent for the ANC and the DA and the EFF. Brilliant. It's brilliant. Well it was unbelievable what they came up with. And when I actually read the act properly, I said to Lauren, I cannot believe this. And when I told her what it actually was, you couldn't believe that they would do it. Believe it. And but they did. It, it, it is a mafia electoral act. Mafia. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's incredibly clever. And you know, I cannot believe that anyone in the ANC could come up with that. There were some clever people behind the scenes that said, how do we now shaft these people permanently into the ground? Let's put something in place that completely disempowers them. So guys, That's exactly guys, what happened. We can't let them war and let's no. get the signatures. And let's get the votes. signatures. But you're also going to need more funds for campaigning. Sadly, right? yeah. I mean, we're actually about, I think, 20,000 short for the contesting fee. And then we worked out we'll need about 310,000 rand for a good effort with... <laughs> Posters, Facebook ads, and what was the other thing? I have it written down somewhere. But just awareness everywhere to get yeah. that 70,000 votes. Oh, and then votes. like info table packages and stuff. To get that 70,000 votes. Yeah. yeah. So those of you that, that can help, uh, please do. I will do a live stream on Ohm's channel for fundraising. Yeah, though. yeah. 
But we wanted to explain to you what happened. And it's not just Ohm that has been shafted. It's all the other new parties, okay? All the other parties that are not represented yet. They keep on calling it small parties. That is wrong. Mm. The small parties are the one that made it into parliament that are there, that have been there for years, that have shrunk. It's disadvantaged parties. Disadvantaged parties. The okay. ANC has Explain. like tens of millions a year. Yes. The DA has, I'm not sure how many millions a year. The EFF has a couple of million a year. Take all that money away, make the playing mm. field even, and everything will change. It will change a lot. Yeah. I mean, uh, the way things work now, there can be no equal democracy at all. They they call it um, representative sharing or equitable sharing. The votes will be the the excess votes will be shared amongst them equitably. Equitably means the biggest gets the most. Gets the literally. most. No, listen. So I, I was in a meeting where this was explained to me, and I learned what equity means at school, and I've read about equity in the dictionary. It's not how the government no. understands equity. No, no, no not no. at all. But this is how they can stay in power forever. Mm -hmm. And when Cyril means they, they're going to get two-thirds, he means it. Uh, they are going to pull something that's going to shock this nation. The only people that can stop it is Jacob Zuma and the MK party. So don't shout and swear at them. Yeah. Let me tell you something. They could be the best thing that's ever happened to this country. So, are we going to leave it there? Thanks to all of you that have joined us. Uh, We're going to have to throw a party after the election. Yeah, definitely. All this work. <laughs> Please like this so that uh, more people can see it and share it as far and wide as possible. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for all your efforts. Keep up the e efforts. And as Andrew Good said, night. may it rain. <laughs> <laughs> may it rain. So we really test people's <laughs> resolves. Because homies will go out in the rain Absolutely, and vote. Yeah, yes. definitely. Thanks, okay. everyone. Thanks, Good everyone. Good night.